Oh, one of my all-time favorite pro gamers recently wrapped up his mandatory military service and he decided to come back to the game. Now, I know some of you are getting deja vu. You're not accidentally watching the same video twice. Just a couple of days ago, I uploaded a video featuring TY going up against Zaun. But this player, right over here in the top left hand corner, in game number one of this best of three. One of my personal favorites. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of TY, but I've watched a whole lot more of this man's game. He's known as the Machine of StarCraft 2, and when he first went off to the military, he repeatedly mentioned that he wasn't gonna come back. Yet here we are. We're looking at Innovation's main command center. Now, just on the off chance you're unfamiliar with Innovation, just know that this guy has basically won it all, okay? GSLs, WESG, WCS, SSL, uh, IEM, he probably won an MLG at some point. Ba basically, all of the tournaments with the abbreviations. He's got roughly $800,000 in tournament earnings over the course of his career. He's been good ever since the early days of StarCraft 2, and now he's back. Now, from what I've heard, this particular best of three is actually a banger. So, spotting right here, in the bottom right hand corner, one of my all-time favorite Zerks from South Korea as well. We're looking at Dark's main hatchery. Maybe I should have done that intro a little bit sooner, because there was always a chance that Dark was going to plant one of his hatcheries on the other side of the map. Um, anyways, um, not, not the case. Not the case in this one. So, this particular series was recommended to me by Wardy. For those of you unfamiliar, Wardy casts tons of StarCraft 2, and he mentioned that this particular Best of 3 series is an absolute banger. If I were to make a guess, I think this series was probably played sometime last week. So, in like the first week of March, and I looked it up, Innovation's mandatory military service, it ended on the 1st of March. Now, I know that it depends on the branch that you are, are, are serving in in the military, so maybe, maybe he did have a little bit of time away as well from... I don't know how it works, man. Maybe he got weekends off or whatever and he got some time to practice? Either way, um, it's really only been... I, I think this series must have been played within the week of Innovation coming back to the game. Either that or he just, well, remembers, right? Personally, when I don't play for like three days, I get incredibly rusty. Apparently, Innovation doesn't have to play much for like two years and <laughs> still be capable of apparently going toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like Dark, who really is on point. Dark is, yeah, looking incredibly strong right now. So, we'll find out. It's really exciting though, because he mentioned a couple of times, I, I remember a couple of times, him specifically saying that he wasn't going to come back to the game. And yeah, the fact that he uh, he's back right now. I know a lot of you are big fans of innovation as well. Uh, the fact that he decided to come back is honestly really, really good. Really, really fun. Anyhow, let's see. Innovation, of course, also did play StarCraft 1. I believe he played under the idea of Bogus, I want to say. I think that used to... I probably should have looked this up beforehand. Personally, I, uh, I didn't watch StarCraft 1 back in like, you know... 2008, 2009 or so, which is, I guess, when Innovation was playing. Either way, he basically switched over to StarCraft 2 in the early days, and he's been strong ever since. Okay. So, let's see. The meta, of course, has changed quite a bit. I'm very curious to see what Innovation decides to go for. So, for those of you that haven't heard of the name Innovation before, maybe his nickname is gonna fool you. Maybe you think... Oh, good Reaper control. Maybe you think this guy is an innovative player, okay? Um... You'd be wrong. You'd be very, very wrong. People call him the machine because he is always incredibly macro focused and he, ooh, he usually does the same build over and over and over again. So yeah, I don't know why he picked the name Innovation. Maybe he th maybe he thought the English word sounded kind of cool. Anyways, the first couple of Hellions here are getting a good amount of damage in. Not bad whatsoever. And with an opener like this, okay, yeah. Dark was originally intending on, I think, going for a Roach Push, but he now decided that, well, drones are apparently more important after you lost quite a few of them there. So he decided to drone up all the way until triple gas. Okay, now he's going to saturate them as well. That's interesting. These gases are super quick, so you always have to go for some sort of attack. Otherwise, you're just going to start stacking up gas for no apparent reason. But yeah, now he can only make a couple of Roaches at once. Either way, though. Um, for Mr. Uh, Dark, it would be better if he does not commit to a Roach attack, because there's a Benchy opener coming out of, uh, out of Innovation here. Innovation looking really strong, guys. <laughs> innovation looking really good here so far. How many workers has he killed? Five workers for two Hellions, a Reaper Control on point. Okay, Depot uh, lifting timing right there on point as well. We're gonna go into a bit, uh, additional barracks. So, 
I guess one advantage for innovation in this particular matchup is that like his go-to build, right? The go-to build for like two years ago, right? It's really not that much changed. For a while, we saw a ton of Ghost play, but Ghost obviously, uh, yeah, the unit is just not as powerful as it once was. So we still see it a lot, but Liberators are also quite popular. But that traditional bio-based army, that traditional, like, Marine Siege Tank or Marine Widowmine based force that Innovation used to play a lot, uh, it's still very popular. Obviously, Terran Mech has also found a lot of popularity lately. We see a bunch of Battle Mech, but he doesn't really need to go for any of that. He doesn't really need to go for any of those fancy unit compositions. The good old standard, it works quite well. So, this is a 1-1-1 with a third command center. Now into heavy bio play. Stimpak is going to finish up momentarily. And here we go, the Banshees. Dude, if Innovation wins over Dark... Dark is genuinely like a... I would say like a... If, if I'm being conservative, a top 5 player. I would probably rate Dark even higher than that. Dark is looking incredibly good right now. So far though, innovations looked a little bit more impressive. That being said, we're looking obviously at the worker kills and the harassment and all that. Uh, Supply-wise, I've got a feeling this should be slightly, yeah, slightly more even. So maybe there are a couple of uh, macro mishaps right here for innovation. Nah, nah, nah. Innovation's probably the greatest macro player of all time, but I can imagine it does take a little bit to get back into the swing of things in that department, but... Yeah, we'll, we'll see how this series progresses. It would be amazing, though. I have no idea, but it would be amazing if uh, if Inno ends up winning this. Okay, enough fanboying. I'm gonna try and be somewhat impartial. To be fair, though, in like the last two dozen casts where I've featured Dark, I've been fanboying over Dark instead. Who now decides to go for a 1-1 with missiles. So he's going Roach Speed. And he's also going for the Hydralisk Den right now. That is kind of interesting to me. I don't think I particularly like that in this sort of scenario. Because... Mm -hmm. The problem with Roach Ravager based unit comps, and this is really good for him. The problem with Roach Ravager based unit comps is that it falls off the longer that the game goes on. So I would imagine that Dark probably is going to transition towards Lurkers eventually, but that is him saying, yo, I'm going to play the most passive game ever. There's the Hive coming up. I'm expecting a Lurker down here shortly as well, but we'll see. Here's the Marine push though. Plus one, plus one is finishing up way before that of the Zerg. He's gonna go for a drop into the main base and he's actually driving the tanks back home. Huh. So the only reason to drive the tanks back home right now is if you know that your opponent has you countered and you're not gonna commit. Ooh, okay. A couple of Marines won't be able to... Uh... That is a proper high-level move. I know it sounds kind of silly, but bringing the siege tanks back home when you know it's kind of a lost cause anyways... Mm. It is, uh, yeah, it is good. No target firing right here on the Benchy. Yeah, so it is gonna go down here eventually, but... Now the tanks have joined up with another and another group of Marines as well. Infestors are coming up here for Dark. Lurker then is coming up for Dark as well, who honestly has been contained really nicely. The creep spread is really nothing to write home about. Innovation, uh, yeah, on point with the 2-2 two -two upgrades as well, okay. It would be, it would be quite something. I actually expected this series to be quite one-sided. But so far, Inno is looking good. Is he gonna go home again or is he gonna push? No, look, he's gonna drive home again. So he's looking at this, he's like, you know what, there's no way. Yeah, he knows that there's a good chance that he will be, look at them shuffling the medevac to the back. Sees the queens, decides to back off once more. Okay, so. I don't really know, I don't really know exactly what we were playing two years ago, maybe a year and a half or so ago. Um, but obviously the meta has transitioned towards a very lurker heavy style. If I were to make a guess, we were kind of at the beginning of that as well back then. It is critical right here for innovation that he starts up a counter against the lurker. Because what Zerg players currently like to do is suddenly whip out like 20 of them. And when you're not prepared against a good group of lurkers... Oh my god. Look at him! When you're not prepared against lurkers, they can deal a tremendous amount of damage. You kind of need... You kind of need something, right? You kind of need a good group of units here to deal with that. Preferably liberators and ghosts, but at the very least something to make sure that those lurkers don't uh, yeah, destroy everything. Marines, marauders, and siege tanks, usually not the go-to option. Anyhow. 
We've got ourselves a uh, sensor tower here coming up at the front as well. Maybe he's been watching a lot of games, man. He honestly... Um, I never know exactly how much time the players have to... Uh, you know, I, I know you can't you can't participate in tournaments and all that, but I can imagine that many of them do still get some time to play. At the very least with holidays off and all that, and you must have downtime as well to stay up to date with the meta. Just watching a game here and there can obviously be very helpful. Maybe Innovation's been watching my YouTube channel, you know? Uh, probably not, but who knows? <laughs> but you don't really... Oh, yeah, here's the lurkers. Okay, now he knows. He doesn't have a transition ready yet, by the way, so it's just gonna be Marines and Tanks. Oh, here's the abductions. Beautiful moves right there from Dark. That's what we want to see. Keep in mind, there's also two full energy infestors here. Okay. Well, yeah, no. That's not gonna happen. Matter of fact, drop over here. Trying to be as obnoxious as possible. Roaches, though, are gonna be shoveling on over in that direction as well. He doesn't start up a late game transition. That makes me a little concerned. Okay, target fires down the spore crawler to only pick up and get on out of there again. Interesting. I remember Sue, for example. I believe it was Sue. While he was still in the military, he had like three accounts in Grandmaster League. Um, in like the top ten. <laughs> so, you know, like you, you still have to play a decent number of games. You have to play a minimum of 30 games to be eligible for Grandmaster. And that is for every two weeks. So if you have... I think it's... Maybe it's 20 games. Anyways, uh, they changed the rules over the years a lot. Um, but anyways, you have to play a decent number of games to be eligible for Grandmaster. So if you can juggle three, you know, accounts, it's... Yeah, it's definitely... Oh my god, here he goes, though. Beautiful fungal growth there. There's another massive fungal growth. Yeah, no, this is too much damage here. Innovation trying his best to come through. Is he breaking it? Dark has still got a lot of money in the bank, and I think him... Yeah, moving those units from the north all the way down south is very important. Okay, so this is honestly one critical error here from Innovation, and that is him refusing to go for a late-game army. He's playing a mid-game army against a late-game Zerg. And while that can sometimes work out if you have a significant advantage, I don't think I like it all too much. So you can see him making these desperation moves because he's just not pivoting away from this unit comp that he's got right now. But honestly, up, up until like the 10-minute mark, I think he was winning. I mean, he may still be winning this. Yeah, you know what? He's still in a killer position. But those Vipers, they're so dangerous here. Look. Every time we see an Abduction, that's the Siege Tanks going down. And Abduction, of course, did get nerfed a little bit. But this is slowly looking worse and worse right now for the Terran. Yeah, yeah. So this is what you could get away with back in the day. No longer. Zerg players have figured out how to counter this army composition quite nicely. I'm imagining we've seen a Parasite bomb right here on these Metavex as well. Still, though, Innovation's powering out massive armies. He's only got four bases, so he doesn't have that mass command center style that is so popular in the current meta. But what he does have is a huge amount of units. Okay. Dude, Concave over here as well, man. Oh my god. Let's go, dude. Here he can. Ooh, he actually gets on top of all of these lurkers over here, too. The Vipers are getting sniped as well. They threw up some blinding clouds, but that's not gonna hurt these Hydralisks more so than anything else. No way! You know what? Innovation actually wins this. I think he also didn't assume that this was gonna go as well as it did, but he decided, you know what? It's too late to transition anyways. So I'll just stick around to what I've got. I'm not gonna go for that Mass Command Center style. I'm not gonna transition towards Liberators and Ghosts. I'm just gonna stay on, well, now five command center, and I'm just gonna make an awful lot of units. And it is clear that Dark was not prepared for that. GG! Next up, we find ourselves on altitude. This is a map that I feel like really leans into that heavy macro style quite nicely, just because it's massive and you got a lot of bases to acquire. That being said, it is pretty... Yeah, it is very big, right? So your, your bases are very spread out. And usually Zork players do prefer that, but so far, I am very impressed with the way that Innovation is playing this. Now, by the way, there's one more player that just recently returned from his mandatory military service. I don't really want to spoil it for you, but we have another of the all-time greats. This time around, a Protoss player that also has once again come back.
I will make a video later this week highlighting him as well. So if you aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, make sure you do so so you get notified as soon as that video goes live. I mean, you can Google it. You can probably figure it out pretty quite uh, pretty quickly if you want to. But I'm, I'm going to keep it a secret for just a little bit longer. But honestly, right now, uh, yeah, uh, a bunch of the big names, right? A bunch of the players that started their, their military service like a year and a half, two years or so ago. They're all coming back, which is pretty funny. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I really feel like I remember Innovation repeatedly mentioning that he wasn't going to come back. <laughs> you know, to be fair, the alternative is getting a real job. Ugh. That includes myself as well. I could also go out there and get a, a real job rather than, you know, make internet content. Not the most transferable skill, I suppose, but... Anyways. I, uh, no, it's good to see these, uh, these names coming back. I think a lot of them... Like, a year and a half or so ago? Ooh, he gets, uh, he gets a drone. A year and a half or so ago? I, I wonder... Okay, so I've talked to quite a few of the Koreans, and a lot of the Koreans seem to be quite excited for Stormgate. A lot of uh, players in StarCraft in general seem to be putting their money on Stormgate, and they're, they're assuming that that is going to be, like, the next big RTS game, right? And since they've announced that I think the beta is supposed to start up of that game sometime this year, um, I think a lot of the players are, like... Keen to see what's gonna happen there, right? Because if you're innovation right now, you know there's a chance that you know you might be able to make a million dollars over the next couple of years if you're good at RTS games. I mean, you never know. Maybe StarCraft 2 is nice, right? Maybe that's what they're thinking. I can always, well, in, in his mind, he can always transition towards uh, Brute War as well if he wants to. But maybe, just maybe, there's a chance that Stormgate is gonna blow up and. You know, there's gonna be some big tournaments running there. These guys have definitely got some funding. There's certainly a, uh, yeah, an expected pro gaming scene there. I wonder, I wonder how many of these guys that are returning are keeping that one in mind. Good scout right there for innovation. He saw that, well, there wasn't anything all too scary inside of that main base. Only a single drone returning gas is really all you need to see. Because that means you don't really need to go for a, uh, a Benchy follow-up. So, he's gonna go for a Liberator. Quick triple CC here once again. One drone, one Reaper, but a lot of scouting information as well. I thought, by the way, that Dark was going to go for a Roach push in the previous game, and I wonder if that was the original plan. Innovation, though, coming across very quickly with the first couple of Hellions. Throwing his opponent off a little bit, killing, if I remember correctly, four drones there. It definitely allowed him to, uh, yeah, force that Zerk army to stay home. Although, maybe in that previous game, he would have liked to see those roaches coming across. Anyways, the Queen's not in the right spot. But apparently the Hellions are not gonna... Okay, well, they are gonna try. No, uh, he wanted to try, but now there's too many Queens in his area. Third CC. Already flowing on... Or flowing? Floating on over towards the low ground. Flowing like a river. Driving... Driven by petrol. And I, don't, I don't know what to use. I don't think you can fly with petrol. I think that would be difficult to... Uh, anyways. Hellions trying to get some work done, but not really a whole lot happening. You don't really need to deal any damage, though, with an opener like this. The nice thing about the triple CC start is that you can just simply sit back for a little while and... Well, macro up. This is the anti-O-Army hotkey siege, in case you're unfamiliar. Even pro players. <laughs> they do use... Uh, the O army hotkey regularly. Okay, this time around we have a more conventional transition here. So Dark actually using his Evo Chambers as a wall to prevent those Hellions from getting into that spot once again. He's gone for the lair, he's now going into the Baneling Nest as well. So his plan is to go for the, uh, the Ling Bane based army, which I personally think is a fantastic choice. I like Road Ravager, but not so much at this level of play. I feel like it's better... You know, uh, up to like maybe Grandmaster League or so, but once you go beyond that, it seems that at the pro level, the Roach Ravager based army is just not as good. It's just too passive, I guess. You can do that Roach push at like the four minute mark, right? And then your next attack is basically when Lurkers are out, or maybe like a, a Roach 1 1 attack, but yeah, it all feels a little bit shaky. It doesn't feel as rigid as that Ling Bane run by where you can, well, send in Zerklings, but you can also do a, a roll by into a mineral line. You lack all of that when you go for a Roach based army. And well, it certainly seems viable. It's just a little too passive for my liking. But anyways. Innovation once again coming in. He's gonna sacrifice this right now. Oh, you have to... Okay. The drone's desperately trying to block this. Not really gonna happen. 
Did that Liberator get sniped as well, by the way? Yeah, the Liberator also did get sniped. Anyhow, that's basically all the aggression now. From the Terran player. Ooh, I don't think you want to move out. No, you know, that's not the time, my man. If you move out right now, you lose a mineral line worth. Okay, yeah, no. He's forced to come back home. There's a lot more Zerklings on the back of this, too. I wonder if Dark just decides to go for a 1-1 one -one push with Baneling Speed. There's actually a chance that he can deal critical amounts of damage. Fourth Command Center starts up right now. Okay. I don't mind the idea. Now, he's going seven Overlords at once. That's absurd. He doesn't need that many Overlords. But I guess he's going to be done with Overlords for the foreseeable future, so that's nice. It just means that this aggression or the base defense is going to be a little bit more difficult. Okay. Now, seeing that many Overlords at once, unless it's a mistake, it's an indicator that he doesn't really want to go all out here anytime soon. So, I'm assuming we're going to go 2-2 two, two upgrades and then straight into a Hive. Oh, we're already going into a Hive. Fair enough. Yeah, so you can go Adrenal Glands. You could go Ultralist Cavern. Ultra Cavern, definitely a, a possibility. And you know what? Against someone like Inno, who hasn't played really against the new Ultralisk, I would imagine, it's not a bad choice. Ultralisks are quite a bit better than when he first went uh, to the military. Uh, if he once again decides to refuse to transition towards late game units, I think that's an excellent choice. So we're gonna go into additional bio production here. We need to see tech labs over here. And a ghost academy. He's going drilling claws, by the way. Second factory is finishing up here at the front. Hmm. Plus two carapace, by the way, not started here for Dark. That is a misplay. You really do need... Okay, there you go. Thank you, Dark. <laughs> you really do need that upgrade. When playing Ling Bane base, the upgrades are so incredibly important. Ooh, now this is a beautiful catch. Yep, that is the catch of a lifetime there. That's exactly what you want. That's the type of move that can just straight up win you the game. He's now also cleaning up the units over here on the other side of the map, it seems, and suddenly Zerk is everywhere. Siege Snake's here at the third base, also do end up getting surrounded. And even though Dark was planning on playing a late-game based army here, he's going straight into a hive. I don't even really know if he needs it. Widow Mines? Oh, blow up on them, or, or what are they called? The SCVs as well. You can kind of evacuate a couple of them out of there if he wants to, but there's a lot of damage coming out of the Lings and the Banes. 27 SCVs have already gone down, and now Dark is just rallying everything that he's got through the center of the map. And suddenly the House of Cards comes crumbling down. And that takes us to the map Ancient Cistern, which will be the final game in this Best of 3 series. Yeah, getting that bio army surrounded right over at the fourth base, losing those two siege tanks over there as well, and then, well, cleaning up the attacking force as well. It's just a bit too much. You can't make such mistakes at this level of play, and, well, Dark saw an advantage. He wasn't planning on winning the game just yet, but we all know that Dark doesn't really need a whole lot to try and go for the win. There's a lot of players out there that will happily expend behind that, right? Like, someone like Serral may look at that and, like, you know, go straight into a, a sixth base or whatever. Start up another round of drones using that advantage that way. Dark, generally speaking, will go for the win whenever he's got the chance. No cheese coming out of innovation here so far, and that doesn't really surprise me all too much. He's gone SCV into a Reaper. And honestly, it's a great opener, right? Going SCV scout into a Reaper, it ensures that you're not going to lose the game in the earlier stages of it. I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to be seeing him go for that Benchy-based opener once more, just because it's the most stable and the most rigid strategy overall. It just really allows you early game map control, and you can't really die to anything. Okay, so here's the tech lab switcheroo. Roachworn once again coming up three and a half minutes into the game. We're gonna go Cloaking Field together with a Viking. Okay. So the problem with this for Zerk is that if you go for a roach based attack, right, you'll usually hit your opponent at about 445, five ish minutes, depending on the timing of the Roachworn. But right around that time that you get to watch the other side of the map, the Benchies pop out. So. Okay, this is a good scout right here for Dark. He actually sees the timing of the third command center. Um, it's a little, it's a little move, but usually whenever 
so, so first off, the roach-based attack. Um, whenever the roach-based attack comes, a banshee should be popped out by the time that it gets across the map. And it seems that that is what we have right over here. Dark just scouted the front here and he saw the supply depots. Both of these supply depots are an indicator, the timing of which at least, uh, that there is no third command center in the main base. And therefore it's likely a 1-1-1 opener or a 2-1-1. Um, that is something that Dark has certainly picked up on right now. The problem is, if you know that it's a 1-1-1, there's always the chance for a Banshee. If you know that it's a 2-1-1, there's a chance that you attack your opponent. Well, now he knows it's not a 2-1-1, but... Um, there's always a chance that you attack your opponent right around the time that... Stimpak finishes up. So, either Banshees or Stimpak, right? Like, those are the most likely option at this point. And Dark still decides to go for the attack. It could be a Liberator opener, like we saw in the previous game. But this is bad right now for Zerg. This is really rough right here for Dark. Yep, fantastic start for innovation. I mean, he's trying to make the best of it. Moving towards the high ground. And I think one roach decided to split itself off from the pack as well. Running with its little legs. But it also will get spotted and well... Uh, he's target firing down, there you go. Whatever he can. Eventually, this one also will go down. Okay, so. How much damage can he deal right now with a counterattack? Because we should have Cloaked Benchies. There should be a second one. Okay. Um, we should have Cloaked Benchies right now. Together with Hellions. So, I don't mind the idea of diving Hellions into a mineral line. And sacrificing them. If we can get some damage done together with the Hellions and the Benchies at the same time, right? That would be amazing. Just the creep tumor would be sweet as well. Okay. Not getting the creep tumor here. Right. Gonna grip the units up together. Dark hasn't seen cloaking yet, but now he knows. Problem is though that this attack is really quite late. Yeah. The Overseer is already out. I don't know about the Viking. I guess the Viking ended up killing overlords, which was nice, but I feel like having this attack hit like 20 seconds earlier would have been much better. Could always go Benshi Benshi into a Viking eventually, although that is pretty uncommon. Anyhow, I think that's innovation picking up on the fact that Dark currently likes to go for double Overlords. So if Zerk were to send only a single Overlord across the map, I don't think it's worth ooh, going for the Viking. But with double Overlords, you know, you can guarantee yourself two Overlord kills. Maybe it's not such a bad move. But then I would have liked seeing the 1-1 one, one into 3rd third, uh, third Command Center first, and then into a Starport. A little bit more than what we saw in this game here. But anyways, I digress. Um, we've got ourselves a Hydra Den coming up right now, together with an Infestation Pit, and then 1-1 one, one upgrades once again for the Missile as well as the Carapace. So, this is Dark playing that strategy that I was criticizing a little bit in the previous game a second time. Not a lot of Zerks are fond of it though. At this level of play, You'll be hard-pressed to find a Serral or a Raynor or whatever going for a strategy like this. But, yeah, apparently Dark decides to, once more, play that very passive approach. There are some really killer, yeah, some really killer siege tank positions, and this is one of them. It's difficult to break. He's going for Ravagers right now, and three bottles would be amazing. Uh, okay, he wants to bile that so bad. Yeah, he's gonna try, he's gonna try. There you go. Can he get him? Oh my god, well, he got that and done some more as well since the Medivac also decided to get in range. That is really unfortunate right there for Innovation. I think Innovation was trying to pick up the Siege tanks, but then instead he uh, yeah, ended up losing the Medivac on top of both of the tanks there as well. That is a little bit unfortunate. Hive coming up, Lurker then coming up, and holding that attack really allows Dark to now transition towards what he likes most. He's gonna go straight into that late game army right now. How good is Innovation's late game going to be? Is Innovation going to make any ghosts? Is he gonna make any liberators? Is he gonna transition towards mech? Is he gonna go mass command center? Because I'm afraid that if he decides to stick around on marines, marauders, medevacs and tanks once again... I, I don't think it's gonna work a second time around. There's the vipers, we already saw infestors out as well. I'd like to believe, but got a feeling that Dark probably is not all too happy with how game number one went. Oh, 
the file wherever. Hoping that maybe you can catch another Metavec or two. Slowest unload ever. Should not be able to kill this. Zerk has had a... Ooh, really? Wow, he gets the kill. Okay. Zerk has had a lot of time to uh, move army in that direction. But innovation. Did he even lose a marine there? I think he may have lost one marine. I think that's about 15, isn't it? Anyways. The double banshee. Ooh, coming back in for more. Love to see that. Killing whatever they can. They were in the back accumulating energy for some time. At this point, yeah, it's not that big of a deal, but still nice to see. Four drones at the, uh, you know, the three minute mark is a significantly bigger deal than four drones at the 10 minute mark. Nidus Worm coming up. Okay, was this scouted? Where is the Nidus Worm? Okay, nah, that's in a location that will likely not get spotted here anytime soon. Even though it's in a pretty obvious location, it's unlikely that, yeah, we're gonna see the Terran player getting a, uh, a little bit of vision there. Oh, he's trying to get the Lurker Den itself. An ambitious project. It's not gonna happen. Benshees it will go down. I am honestly very impressed, though, with the way that Innovation's playing this. He seems rusty in the sense of the meta, right? In the sense of the strategic meta that we normally see right now, but mechanically, he seems to be on point. Either that or he's got like a different vision of what it should look like, right? Maybe he's been looking at the games that people have been playing late and he's like, you know what? I don't think we need ghosts. But again, we don't have a ghost transition coming up. That should have already been here. Ooh, the entire Roach Ravager army here got caught in the bottom right. Not enough Terran army available though to... Oh, he's trying to retreat even. Wow. A retreating Knight is Worm. Yeah, I was a little concerned of suddenly losing that entire group of units. Hatchery at the 6 o'clock position, once again the night. Yeah, and these units decide to uh, get on out of there. He decides to scan his own main base, by the way, because he heard the scream. The scream of the Nidus is global. So, yeah, at this point, Innovation decides, you know what? I don't know where that Nidus is located, now he spots it. But I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's not inside of my main base. I can imagine that lurkers in a Nidus Worm in the main base is not something that uh, Innovation has got a whole lot of experience with. That would be a pretty terrifying attack. He is gonna just stick around on that low tier army again though. I want to believe, but I've got a feeling that this is not good. Well, it's good for Dark. He's just fishing right now with his... Uh, his harpoons over here. Pulling all of those siege tanks in the range of the lurkers. Look at the two infestors as well, ready to stop any marines that decide to stem forward. This is just not an army that you can beat with marine tank. Uh, you know, you're just not gonna, you're just not gonna shut it down. That's what I said in game number one anyways, but that was mostly because Dark made a mistake. One thing though that you do have with this unit comp, ooh, is mobility. Unless you get fungal, but theoretically speaking, you should have a lot of mobility here. Yeah. The trades become less and less cost efficient right now for Terran. As a matter of fact, already Terran has lost more resources than the Zerg. And that's not really supposed to look that way at this point. Then again though, what he is doing very nicely is just expand on his side of the map. Expanding from the current position of the Terran is difficult. He can go for the base south over here. He can go for the base all the way in the top left. Oh God, he's just... Really, he's just engaging lurkers by splitting against them. Again, I want to believe, but okay, here we go. We've got a bit of a transition coming up. Liberators on the production tab. Liberators also get countered by Vipers. But Vipers, of course, with their abduction skill, it's not as powerful. Infestors? Not an energy. No energy. Yeah, they don't have enough energy. Um, you do need more Vipers here if you want to properly fight all of this, is what I'm getting at. That siege tank, uh, not gonna live. There's another uh, Lurker over here. Dark is just planting Lurkers everywhere, by the way. Incredibly obnoxious. APM-wise, you can see that Dark is a little bit faster overall.
Man, this must be a workout as well for innovation, though. <laughs> like, if you haven't played the game a whole lot lately, to suddenly play a best of three series like this at the highest level... Um, can't imagine the guy is sore the day after, man. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm mistaken, but... This is, uh... Not just a, a mental exercise, but it's certainly also a physical one when you're playing this fast and you're managing this many things at once. Anyhow. One thing I feel like we're lacking here from Dark is parasitic bombs from the Vipers. We probably need like an additional two or three Vipers here. I think that would be really nice. Liberators are just going around the map, by the way, so they're not really part of the main armies. They're mostly being set up right now and yeah, trying to do some harassment, apparently, like sniping overlords. It would take about three years. Keep in mind that the infestor, or sorry, the uh, liberators are now also 25 gas cheaper with the new multiplayer balance patch. There's another yoink. So they are a bit easier to make. Usually people right now use them as an army unit and maybe the occasional bit of harassment, but it seems to be that innovation is just using them for harassment pretty much exclusively. Sport crawler chasing this down. Oddly enough, it's working. Love to see that. That is one legendary sport crawler right there, man. He did not hesitate whatsoever. Anyways, quite a few drones are still gonna go down there, but I'm gonna keep my camera here on this middle fight. Because once again, he's trying to brute force his way through. Whew, okay. Very dangerous move right there. I don't think you can do that. That was a cool shot for the thumbnail. Future Loco, five minutes and 30 seconds. Always nice. That's basically what I'm doing continuously while casting games. I look for cool moments that I can put on the thumbnail. <laughs> Whenever I see something neat happening, that's usually what I'm looking for. No scan available anymore, do we? Yeah, now he's got energy once again, but he's been so aggressive. He's got a lot of additional command centers. Eh, he's got a decent amount of additional command centers, but you need a lot here. If you don't have ravens, if you don't have much of anything, there go the abductions once again. This value here from the Zerk is just too much. Now ghosts, by the way, are coming up. Okay, okay. I think we see innovation developing life. <laughs> we see him progress in this game. As we're, uh, we're looking at it. It's, um... Yeah, not a unit he was making earlier on in this series yet. I think he could have started it up much sooner as well in this particular game, but... He's been getting torn apart by late game Zerk units. Beautiful moves right here from Dark, man. Really nicely done. Look at the resources lost. Just way more minerals down the drain here for the Terran players so far. That's why the Ghost transition usually is a little bit suited. So Ghosts have Snipe, that's amazing against Lurkers. They have EMP, that's amazing against Infestors and Vipers. It's good against everything. I don't, I don't like these fights, you know? No, they feel a little desperate. So no Parasitic Bombs, though, on the Metavex. Yeah, it now means that there are still 14 of them up in the air. There's about, well, for every Terran bio unit, there's like, uh, for every two of them, there's a private plane. Which is kind of nice. These Terran units over here, they live a life of luxury until they die. But, yeah, it's it's better than nothing, I suppose. The, the, the matter of facts really allow you, though, to stay in this game for much longer. So that's why parasitic bombs to continuously soften these units up can be incredibly helpful. Because at some point you will get some kills. Bailing Nest only just now coming up, so I think Dark was hoping as well that this was going to be a, uh, a Terran who decided to stick around on that mid-game army here once again. But now he's forced to go into Bailings to address the Ghosts. So from here, and this is again maybe something that Innovation doesn't necessarily know because he hasn't played that much, but from here most of the top level Terrans like to transition towards Ghost Mech. So they go from that heavy, from that heavy Ghost based army into Siege tanks, blue flame hellbats, Thors, that sort of thing. And I do feel like the current meta, the, the way that Terran vs. Zerk is played, I feel like it is really well suited for Innovation's playstyle. That slow, rigid approach. Anyway, the man still has it. He may very well win this game. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dark? Literally within like a week after you come back from your mandatory military service is absurd. The only explanation that I have, and maybe this is copium, but the only explanation that I have is that the guy has been practicing for 
as, as, as long as he has been able to. <laughs> Whenever he had a little bit of time available, he must have been putting in the work. But then again, I don't remember anybody mentioning that there's a ladder account out there that, you know, Innovation usually plays on that happens to be very good, so... Custom games? I don't think that makes any sense. Here goes the Zerk once again. Dark, apparently happy with the way that this game's been going. He's trying to go towards this very critical area. There's Parasitic Bombs, beautiful splits there by the Terran. Snipes dealing a lot of damage, and now suddenly the Terran army is creating a full-on 360 surround as they clean up everything here. That was a humongous loss right there from Dark. I think Dark's been looking at this for a while. He's like, yo, I, I think I can just go and win the game right now. But Innovation's been essentially out macroing him for a while already, getting a lot of income. Because of that, he was able to just, yeah, reinforce it quite easily. And now suddenly, Innovation's the one smelling blood in the water, sending a lot of low HP units to watch the other side of the map. The Metavex are all dangerously low on HP, but it might be enough to just push straight through this. Okay, three Lurkers, though, up north. Kill a command center, and that is fantastic. 26 SCVs have also gone down. There's not a Lurker over here just being obnoxious, forcing the reinforcements to go over in that direction. Is there enough for the Terran player to break through this? I don't think so. Would love to see another Parasitic Bomb right over there. Yeah, innovation. No split this time around. And that is painful. That is incredibly painful. Now we see him boosting away. But look at that one Metavec. That one Metavec killed like eight. <laughs> okay, maybe not eight. Maybe maybe like five or six. But it killed a whole lot of Metavecs very, very rapidly. If this is what innovation looks like, though, such a short amount of time after the mandatory military service, I mean... It's exciting to see where he's going to be in like three months. Okay. Okay. Aggression everywhere. Lurker here on the high ground being incredibly obnoxious. It's been a lot of single lurker attacks from Dark. Couple of lurkers on the right side, couple lurkers on the left side, couple lurkers in the middle. Burrowed in obnoxious locations that take the Zerk like five actions to execute, but the Terran has to execute like 10 actions in order to defend against it. Which is a very APM intensive way of playing for the Terran, and obviously that's exactly what Dark is trying to get done. Another snipe is gonna go down. That one's not gonna live. This is a, a very competitive game. Dark has managed to hold on after losing a huge chunk of his army. Income wise, it's been an absolute roller coaster, but it's relatively even at this point in time. This low ground base is usually the easiest one to acquire right now, but where do you go from here, right? So I brought up the top left one. Kind of feels far away. The same for the one over here. Kind of feel, feels far away as well. You kind of have to like dedicate your attention to one side of the map. So either you choose the top left corner or you choose the right side. But. If you do so, then obviously Zerk is going to take the exact opposite end, and they can, well, usually expand quite a bit faster. We've seen a lot of upgrades here coming up for Dark here for a while already. Dark has basically got, well, any transition that he likes right now, whereas Innovation's a little stuck, right? He's still stuck on Marine Marauder Siege Tank, as, as like the majority of his army. We, we don't see that Ghost Mech transition that is proven to be so popular and so powerful right now. Two very, uh, proud marines. <laughs> very brave, or walking onto the creep. They get surrounded right away, but at least they tried. Pathogen Glance even coming up right now as well for Dark. So Dark's basically looking at whatever he can, and he wants to get value out of spellcasters here primarily. That is so many lurkers, by the way. 26 lurkers. 10 ghosts available. 20 marauders, 21 marines. Quite a few siege tanks as well. He's trying to up his siege tank count primarily, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, Zerk is basically happy to expend whatever side he can. So even though the base on the left now got the knight, the one on the bottom right has been mining for a little while already. Okay, apparently Innovation's gonna want to fight over here. On creep. He must have a couple scans available, but immediately there's a massive counterattack right now from Dark. Dark trying to... Oh my god, yeah. Just shut down this position in a heartbeat. And rather than Innovation committing deeper onto the creep, because he scattered those lurkers, he decides to come back home. This is a killer move right here from Dark, who's dealing a ton of damage on the other side of the map. Taking out, well, two full mineral lines, it seems. 
And now only 25 SCVs remain here for innovation. Okay. Oh, huge surround. Okay, now he decides to back off. He wants some blinding clouds. He wants some parasitic bombs. He wants to move those lurker closer forward. Beautiful play right there from Dark. Could have stuck with the surround, but decided, no, I can get even more. Maybe a bit of a greedy move, but I think this time around it did pay off. He can still reinforce this with about a gajillion Zorklings, as long as he's got the larva for it. Innovation pretty much broke here. He doesn't have a lot of money, he doesn't have a lot of income, but he does have still quite a scary force. Units are actually rallied into the Nidus network. Maybe he was intending on going across the map once again. He needs those units at home right now, though. Is there enough for innovation to breach through these Zerg defenses? I don't think so, especially now with the Lurkers coming in from the left as well. This is one final saving, or one final Hill Mary player rather here for uh, Mr. Innovation. He's trying his best to make the best of this scenario, but I think he's been beaten by Dark. But honestly, I'm incredibly impressed. Yeah, coming back from this position is gonna be nearly impossible. GG. Even though Dark is the one who obtains the victory here, I'm incredibly impressed by innovation.